All right, so we are in the last section here, five, seven. We did skip five, six. We are going to combine all of our probability rules together here. So first up is probability rules, and then of course the counting rules. Working with our probability rules, this is just another way to view the information instead of the table form that we kind of saw at the end of section 5.3. So just options as far as which way you would like to look at them, but they all give the same information. So are you finding a single event? So single event is up on the top here, which is just following the basic or experimental, which is both of these are almost the same. Just remembering that it depends on, am I using experiment data or are all the possible options the same likelihood? Okay, so both of these are how many ways can E occur over the total? If you are not doing a single event, we have the words or, and, or at least, and then we can kind of split them up here. So ors, if they are disjoint, we just add them together. But when they're not disjoint, we have to subtract the overlap. For an and, this is our independent version right here. This one down here is dependent. I will show you an example today. And then at least, is the probability of so one minus the probability of none. So again, all the formulas we've done um, before, so we are just going to review them and see what we can do. All right, in the game show, deal or no deal, a contestant is presented with 26 suitcases that contain amounts of money ranging from one penny to a million dollars. The contestant must pick an initial case that is set aside as a game progresses. The amounts are randomly distributed among those suitcases. So here's in our table what we have. Eight of our cases are between a penny and $100. Six are between 200 and 1,000. Five are between 5,000 and 50,000. And we have seven between a hundred thousand and a million dollars. The question we would like to ask is what is the probability that the contestant picks the case worth at least a hundred thousand dollars? So that are these guys here, hundred thousand dollars or more is seven of our suitcases out of the 26. So it is just a basic probability here, seven out of 26. It's a single event. So we just have to figure out how we figure it out. They're all equally likely. So it is just seven out of 26. 4.269. 0. 0.269 is just about 27%. So if I were to repeat the game a hundred times, about 27 of those would have a that had chosen a case that is at least a hundred thousand dollars. So a hundred thousand dollars up to a million. According to the National Constitution Center, 18% of Americans trust organized religions. In a random sample of three Americans, what is the probability all three trust organized religion? Okay, so we are no longer doing a single outcome. We are choosing three random Americans. So the probability of the first agrees is 0.18. The probability of the second one agrees is 0.18, as well as the third. If I multiply all of those together, I get 0 0.06. Okay, so this is a multiplication question. This is the probability that all agree. Three Americans are randomly selected again. What's the probability that at least one does not agree or trust with or trust organized religion? Okay, so at least means we take one minus the probability of one trust the organization at least one does not 
So probability of exactly what we just did here of all agreeing. If we want the probability that at least one does not trust, then we want the probability that one minus the probability that they all do trust. So one minus the value we just got gives us 0.994. So it'd be more likely, it's not gonna be likely to be able to pick three Americans and find that they all trusted organized religion. You're much more likely to have 99.4% more likely to have one or more that don't believe in that or trust in that organized religion. I will do some more examples at the end here. Just wanted to kind of go through all of them here. So for counting, are you making a sequence of choices? So yes, that's gonna be your multiplication rule here. You don't have to use a tree diagram really. All the ones we're gonna do are gonna be able to be done with this. So if you're not making a sequence of choices, then you either have two choices of order mattering or not. So if order matters, you're using a permutation. If, however, your options are not all uh, different, we go down here. If there's no order, we use a combination. So again, all of these different things, just kind of working together to figure out which is which, how do I know, and just kind of working through all the examples. The Hazelwood City Council consists of five men and four women. How many different subcommittees can be formed that consist of three men and two women? What I need to do is I need to pick the men and then I need to pick the women. But in order to do this, we're also using a combination. So, it does not matter how I pick the men, it does not impact how I pick the women. So what I need to do first is figure out how many ways I pick the men and then how many ways I pick the women. And because it's an and, three men and two women, we're gonna multiply the two results together. We have five men of which we want to select three. Five, two, three. We have four women of which we want to select or choose two of them. Once I get the results, because there is an and, I'm going to multiply the two together. On the next slide, if we were to type in five, two, three in a calculator, we are going to get 10. Doing the same for the women. There are four women. We want to choose two of them. The ways we do that is six. Then to get the total of number of ways to get men and women is to multiply those two results together. And times six is 60. So there are 60 possible different combinations that have three men and two women. You can combine two combination things together into a sequence of choices. The Daytona 500, uh, the season opening of the NASCAR event has 43 drivers in the race. In how many different ways could the top four finishers, first, second, third, and fourth place occur? We need to find the number of ways. So clearly that's a counting problem. And this one is order matters, okay? So we need to find the number of ways to select the top four. I would follow my permutation is usually what I do. That's where I usually go. I have 43. I want to arrange the first four. That is a permutation. The other option is just to do a sequence of choices. First place has 43. Second place has 42 then racers, 41 racers for third, and 40 racers for fourth place. 
both are actually the same exact thing. It will give you the same exact answer. Both give you 2,961,840. If I have 43 racers, there are that many ways to pick first, second, third, and fourth place. I automatically see, hey, I need to pick the top four, arrange them. I go here. If you thought to do it as a sequence of spaces, same answer. It, it's going to work the same way. I'm just, I'm going to skip these next two slides here, but it's going to show you really worked out which one. This is sequence of choices. View it as a sequence of choices or uh, uh, work it as a permutation. Usually combinations of permutations are a little easier. Um, I'll probably I'll only see like one or two of them here on the next slides as we go through some more reviews. But here's some more. So suppose you have the numbers one through 10. What is the probability of choosing a number divisible by three? Numbers one through ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, which of these can I divide nicely by three? Well, three divides by three, six divides by three, and nine divides by three. Okay, this is just a basic probability. I have three choices out of my ten that work to divide by three. Or you could leave that as point three. What's the probability of choosing one of the following? Four, seven, eight, ten. Well, that is four choices out of our total ten, or point four. Text twist. In the game text twist, six letters are given and the players must form words of varying lengths using the letters provided. Suppose you have been given E-N-H-S-I-C. Okay, those are your letters. The first thing we're gonna do is figure out how many different arrangements are possible using all six letters. So immediately I see arrangement, which means I'm going to use a permutation. I have six letters and it wants me to use all six. So I'm going to go six P six. So if I grab my calculator here and ER, because it doesn't matter where the letters go, Six comma six. Okay, 720. 720 different ways I can rearrange the letters. How about if we only want to make four letter words? Well, we still have six letters to choose from. We are still arranging them for mutations, but we only want to use four this time. So, if I go back here, and PR of six comma four, I have three hundred and sixty. All right, next one. An essay test in European history has twelve questions. Students are required to answer eight of the twelve. How many different sets of questions could be answered? Okay, keyword here is sets. It does not matter the order that I answer the questions. I just need to answer 12, uh, sorry, eight of the 12. So this is a combination question. I have 12 to choose from, but I only need to pick eight. So, Go back to our calculator and see our 12 choose eight. And my answer is 495.
If the 2011 Hyundai Genesis has two engine types, two vehicle styles, three option packages, eight exterior color choices, and two interior color choices, how many different Genesises, Gen Genesises are possible? All right, so we're making a sequence of choices. Engine, two choices. Style, two choices. Options, three choices. Exterior, eight choices. Interior, two choices. So if I multiply all of these across, I end up with 192, okay? This is why when you go to a car dealer, you only have specific ones to look at. They may only have, let's say, 10 of a certain model, okay? There is no way, it's very unlikely, sorry, I should say, that if you go to the car dealer, that you are gonna find the exact car that you want with every single option, package, color, engine that you want, which is why a lot of times, if you are very specific, you have to order the car to exactly what you want, just because there's so many different ways they can make them. Oh, that makes sense. All right, so the next one we're gonna work with is looked at as a two-way table. All right, we have columns male, female, child, and rows, survived, and dead. Okay, this is data from the Titanic of if you were male or female, how many survived, died, for, uh, and also as well as children. Okay, so lots of different questions that we are gonna answer here. First one is, what is the probability that a passenger survived? randomly selecting a passenger that they survived. Okay, well, there are 711 that survived out of 2,224. So you can leave that. You don't even have to go to a decimal. It really doesn't matter. If you want it, I will give you the decimal equivalence. It's 0.32. Next one, what is the probability the passenger was a female? And I'm going to alternate colors just so they don't get confusing here. So females, there were 425 females out of that 2,224. Again, you can stop right at that fraction or change it to a decimal just in a calculator, 425 divided by 2224, 0.191. All right, next one. What is the probability that the passenger was a female or a child? Or means I need to add. So females, 425 plus children, there were 109, still out of that 2224. So if I combine those two values, that gives me 534 out of 2224. And that is 0.24. What is the probability that the passenger was female and survived? So I'm looking for female survivors. That is this right here. Female and survived is 316 out of the total. 2,224. This one is 0.142. Right, next question. What is the probability that a passenger was female or survived? All right, so here's my females. Here's my survived, and here's the problem is we have an overlap, okay? I have 425 females. I have 711 that survived, okay? But I have 316 female survivors that were counted twice, so I need to subtract that out. So if I take 425, Add 711 and then subtract 316. That's 820 out of my 2224. Two, two, 
length is 0.369. The female passenger is selected. So we're no longer, this is different. So this one said, what is the probability that the passenger, the passenger, the passenger, the passenger, the passenger. This is now saying, what is the probability of a female passenger? So now I'm only working with females. What is the probability that she survived? Okay, so we're only working with females. There are 316 females that survived out of the 425 total females. That is a 0.744. So next one says if a child passenger is selected. So now we're only working with children. So what is the probability that the child survived? So survived, 57 children survived out of 109 total. So 57 out of 109 is 0.523. If a male passenger is selected, so this time we're only working with males, what is the probability that he survived? Well, there are 3,000, sorry, 338 males that survived out of 1690 total. And that one is 0.20. So, question. Do you think the whole phrase, the adage that women and children first was followed on the Titanic? Does it look like more women and children survived than the men? And if we look at these, 74% of the women survived, a little over 50% of the kids survived, and only 20% of the males survived. So yes, we really do have evidence for that. We can really say that. There were a lot more, you were a lot more likely to be saved if you were a woman or a child that was adhered to. Last question here is, suppose two females are randomly selected, what's the probability that they both survive? Okay, so just following basic probability here, we know that a female survival rate was 0.744. And we wanna randomly select two of them. So 0.744 times 0.744 is gonna give me 0.55. So this had a whole lot of probabilities combined. Basic probabilities, disjoint probabilities, ones with overlap, and then some uh, multiplication of probabilities down here. Because of a mistaken packaging, a case of 12 bottles of red wine contained five Merlot and seven Cabernet, each without leaf. All the bottles look alike and have an equal probability of being chosen. Three bottles are randomly selected. What is the probability that all three are Merlot? I have to pick three bottles that are Merlot from my five. So that should be a clue that we are going to use a combination here. I need... I have five bottles. I need to choose three of them, five Merlots, of which I need to choose three. In our denominator, I have 12 total bottles, of which I can choose three. Let me recap and explain that again. So my numerator, I need to know how many ways I can choose three bottles of Merlot, okay? How many ways to choose three Merlots? How many ways to choose three Merlots? Okay, well, I have five to choose from. So that's where the top comes from. The denominator is how many ways to pick three bottles. In general, I am picking three bottles, how many ways can I pick three? All right, 
So we are going to pull up our Desmos here. We have MCR523 that I want to divide by NCR1223. There's our answer, 0.045 is the probability that I'll pick all three Merlots. C, what's the probability of no Merlots? Well, no Merlots means I want three Cabernet. Okay, so my top now is how many ways do I choose three Cabernet? Well, there are seven Cabernets of which I need to choose three. My denominator is still I have 12. I want to choose three of them. So that denominator has not changed. All right, so NCR7, three is my numerator. And I'm going to divide that by my same denominator of 12, two, three. And I now have 0.1. Five, nine. Point one, five, nine. This one here is that multiplication that is not independent. So I'm going to show you kind of how you would do one of these. Just because when you're doing your probability project, some of you may have an instance where you're doing a deck of cards and you're dealing them out. And you may see something like this. So suppose that you draw three cards without replacement from a standard 52 card deck. What is the probability that all three are aces? What's happening is you're drawing one card. You're then drawing a second card and then drawing a third card. And I want all of them to be aces. So to get started, my first card, there are four aces out of 52 cards. But once I take that ace out of the deck, I now only have three aces left, and I only have 51 total cards, because that one card was pulled out. So I now have three out of 51 for my second option. This is considered a dependent probability. The probability that I draw my second ace is impacted from already pulling an ace out. Then the probability of pulling a third ace has been impacted by the previous two aces being drawn. So I now only have two aces left. And I've already pulled two cards out, so I have 50 remaining. Okay, so just to give you an idea here, if I needed to enter these in. Okay, four out of 52. Arrow over, hit the multiply button. Three out of 51, arrow over, multiply, two over 50. 0 0.000018. Very, very, very small chance that this would occur. So 0 0.00018. Was it three zeros? I think it was three zeros. Last question. A company requires a product to have a defect rate of 0 0.01. If the average worker allows 0.4 defects, would three people checking be sufficient enough to meet the company standards? Okay, so person one allows 0.4 defects. Person two allows 0.4 defects. Person three allows 0.4 defects. All three of them combined, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 
times 0.4 times 0.4 gives me 0 0.064. My company standard is 0 0.01. I have not reached my company standard. This is greater than what I want. So no, it is not enough. Okay, one thing we could do is we could check, hey, does one more make it? Well, let's see if I times by another, not 0.04, times by another 0.4, does it work? We can go here. So we had 0.4, to the third was 0.064. So what if I add another one? What if I do another one? 0.4 to the fourth. Okay, nope, I'm still not below 0.01. So let's see, 0.4 to the fifth, is five enough? It is not, it is 0.01024 because there's more numbers after there, it's not enough. I would need six people to be checking this product. Can send it to me an email. I will check your questions, your math, anything you want in order to meet my quality standards. So that is the end of probability. Again, kind of mentioned that probability project. If you guys are having questions on any of that stuff, please, please email me. I have no problem in reviewing your project before you submit it to me. And even after you do submit and I grade it, this is one of those assignments that you can resubmit. You can take it back, make your corrections and resubmit it for a new grade. All right. So I hope you have a good rest of your week. As always, email me with anything you have as you work on these topics.